Given that vulnerable environmental phenomena will always occur, how do we deal with them? How do we reduce our vulnerability to being caught in the disaster? Stay with me, Ilan Kalman, to find out in this latest episode of The Science of Disasters. Ultimately, disasters arise from political processes, such as those dictating where and what we build, and from social circumstances, such as those creating and perpetuating poverty, inequity, and discrimination. The causes of disasters are humanity's decisions as societies and as individuals. Most of the environmental events and processes we can deal with by reducing vulnerability. We are the ones who create disasters not nature. Vulnerability arises primarily from the choices of those who have the power and resources to make those choices, inadvertently or deliberately, in knowledge or in ignorance. Disasters emerge through human choices, actions, behavior, and values. We have achieved so much success in dealing with disasters and in stopping human suffering, but we have a long way yet to go. Closing this chasm between what we are achieving now to prevent disasters and what we should do is not easy. Some people aim to change fundamentals, focusing on the big picture in order to overcome baseline causes of vulnerabilities. Examples are discrimination, poverty and incompetence. Others prefer to work on smaller scales with less ambitious steps. They demonstrate more direct, more tangible and more immediate positive impacts, which they hope in the end might scale up to wider, deeper changes. Examples are managing forests to permit small wildfires while avoiding big ones, not relying so much on flood walls, and retrofitting properties and surroundings and changing our behavior to withstand floods and wildfires without harm. One approach never precludes the other. We can practice both together, covering all scales of action in tandem so that they complement rather than impede each other. The argument for combining them is that the chronic human conditions of vulnerability, which cause disasters, are ever present at all scales, and they must be tackled at all scales, especially over the long term. Rather than an event, we should recognize that a disaster is a long-term process. Some hazards release their forces and energy swiftly with little specific warning. While we know broadly where earthquakes could strike at any time, such as Haiti and Japan, we cannot yet predict that an earthquake will occur in a specific place at a specific time. We know broadly where tropical cyclones could strike, also including Haiti and Japan, and we can observe the progress of a specific storm. But we cannot predict beyond a few days in advance when and where a major storm might make landfall. We know that Haiti and Japan are vulnerable to earthquakes, hurricanes, tsunamis, epidemics, space weather, and many other hazards because of issues such as social inequities and infrastructure inadequacies. Poverty, ineffective governance, prejudice, and infrastructure lacking adequate planning and building codes all take a long time to become entrenched. Disasters being caused by vulnerabilities require the same lengthy time period to develop as those vulnerabilities. Consequently, in the same way that disasters are not natural, they are neither unusual nor extreme, and they do not happen rapidly. They dramatically expose the vulnerabilities with which people live and are typically forced by others to live. We can prevent disasters and their human suffering, despite the presence of major hazards, and we can do so by reducing vulnerabilities. We must actively choose to do so. Can new technologies like artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things help avert disasters? Join me, Elan Kalman, for the final episode of The Science of Disasters. Why not subscribe and watch all the episodes in the series?